honorable guests, teachers and my dear, dear friends. I am Anjali Madhu of MBA HR and the topic of my presentation is Impact of Union Budget 2016 on Infrastructure. Infrastructure is a basic physical and organizational structure needed for the operations, services and facilities of society or an enterprise for an economy to function. Basically, infrastructure is of two types, economic infrastructure and social infrastructure. The core sectors of infrastructures are energy, transport, communication, health and education. What are problems that an Indian infrastructure faces are land acquisition, funding constraints, poor planning and ex uh, execution, delays in, uh, delays in clearances, population. What, ex what the Indian, ex uh, government, uh, Indian people had expected from the budget 2016. Enough funds for investing in infrastructure that will drive growth, the expectations on rural infrastructure and PPP resetting, PPP means public-private partnership. The Indian aviation industry is on a high growth trajectory and is imposed to become the third largest market travel by 2026. Now the outcomes from the budget 2016 are, now onwards all the schemes will come with a date of expiry rupees 97000 crores are being allocated for the construction of roads and highways across the markets the shops will be given an option to remain open seven days a week big biscuits for infrastructure from the budget announced an amount of rupees 30000 crores have been kept aside for the infrastructure and rail network to boost the co uh, coastal connectivity in the state recent infrastructural development. Metro projects. Even in our Jaipur, Metro has been started which has almost overcome the transportation problem of a common man. Construction of roads, railways and airports. PPP initiative. PPP initiative, a public-private partnership, this model of infrastructural development laid three initiatives for the revival process and those three initiatives are public utilities resolutions, concession agreements and create, uh, create uh, credit rating system for infrastructure projects. The government is committed to PPP mode because, because of the budgetary constraints, risk sharing, maximizing investments, improved maintenance and provisions of efficient services. The steps taken for the infrastructural development are urban renewal mission to improve urban infrastructure and lending money at the lower cost at lower rates to public and private projects. As for my study, I have concluded that the government has proposed an investment of rupees 97,000 crores in the road sector which is definitely going to build the infrastructure of the economy as a whole. PM Modi has hailed housing for PM Modi has hailed the housing for all which would help the people of the lower levels. Various projects have been started and some have raised the infrastructural development of the economy and the budget announced on 29th February 2016 helps this development to continue. <coughs> Tax-free bonds to fund roads, railways and irrigation projects. Steps taken for the development of the rural sector will play a vital role in the forthcoming future of the country's infrastructural development. Thank you. We acknowledge the presence of Dr. Sutani. I am here to present a uh, presentation on impact of agriculture, impact on agriculture sector by budget 2015 and 16. This is the total allocation that has been done to different ministries by the budget 2015 and 16. You can take a look. This is the uh, total uh, budget. We need to think beyond food security and give back to farmers a sense of income security. This was the opening statement that was given by Mr. Arun Jaitley while announcing the agriculture budget. Now I would like to discuss the key features. Our main focus point was to double the farmers income by year 2022 and to enhance expenditure in priority areas. Well, the features are that the uh, budget that has been allocated for the agriculture sector has been 35,984 crores. This, this uh, includes irrigation facilities. The, the, uh, this are Prada under Pradhan Mantri Krishi Chitta Yojana. There will be 28.5 hectares, hectares land that will be brought under irrigation, and some 89 projects will be uh, implemented for irrigation. There are long term initiatives, and 20,000 uh, crores have been 
given under NAVA. 5 lakh forms and ponds and 10 lakh compost bits will be uh, implemented uh, in the scheme of Manurega. There will be soil health cards which will be uh, given to all farmers and the aim is to reach 14 crores by March 2017. Uh, now again, uh, the, to reduce the loan payment on farmers, there has a 15,000 crore has been uh, introduced for in B 2016-17 towards the interest subvention. There is allocation of Prime Minister Fasil Bhima Yojana for crop insurance for around 5,500 crores. Uh, I request you all to please maintain silence. 850 crores have been allotted for daring projects which includes Pashu, Pashudhan Sanjeevi Yojana, National Genetic Center, Knuckles First Patra and E Pashudhan. There are 2,000 retail outlets which have been give, uh, allotted uh, seed and fertilizers facilities for the uh, next three years. Now I would like to uh, discuss the tax taxation system that will have impact on agriculture sector. The Krishi Kalyan says will be applied on all the taxable services to a rate of 0.5%. Services under NCCD and under agriculture sector has been exempted from a 14% to NEL. ED on motor cars, shafts, uh, serves and manufacturing pumps which, uh, which use a 50% in agriculture sector have been reduced to a, uh, 6%. BCD on refrigerated uh, uh, refrigerated containers have been reduced to 5% as well as excise duty on refrigerated containers have been reduced to 6%. E, um, ED on micro reduced have been uh, reduced to 6%. Now indirect taxes. Depreciation will be charged on a rate of 40% on all the assets whether new or old. Section 35 AD have been reduced uh, from 150% to 100% in the income tax. Section 35 triple C, which is deduction in uh, expenditure on agriculture, extension project have been uh, deduction to 100%, and 35 double C have been uh, have been to, uh, issued to 150% till, till year 20, and will be reduced to 100% from the year 21. These are the challenges: income security, uh, solving current crisis, proposed allocation would be enough or not? That will be a future centric opinion. Uh, now to conclude, in my opinion, the budget has been future centric. It, uh, the budget has seen 84% high from the last budget that had been proposed for the agriculture sector. But uh, will the budget be able to solve the current crisis that is depletion of, uh, depletion of uh, farmers' income, farmers uh, doing suicides every day? This would be uh, the challenge to see whether the budget would be, um, whether the budget would be fulfilled all these things. Thank you so much. Thank you, Harsha. I request respected teachers and all my dear friends. I am Karishma, here to give a presentation on the topic Budget Allocated for Education in Rural Areas. Okay, so basically what budget is? See, whenever we allocate budget for anything, it is the income and expenditure for a set of period of time that we have to spend or achieve. And these were the certain areas which were much more affected by the budget 2016-17. Our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji said, Budget is close to our dreams. Its biggest focus is village, farmer, poor, woman and youth. And yes, as we know that the startup initiative which was taken by Narendra Modi ji, uh, the budget that has been allocated like 2016 and 17 it is much more closer to the dreams because the initiatives in the startup was like to in, uh, encourage in entrepreneurship and uh, to establish school and uh, this time we can see that the rural areas have been focused much more as compared to the urban areas and the second one that he said was it's pro village pro farmer and pro poor budget See, this is a condition of the rural area students who has to travel, ma travel miles away in order to go to schools. They have to face certain problems while studying as compared to the students studying in urban areas. See, always till now the education that we get in universities, co colleges are always questioned because whenever we sit for an interview, how much of us uh, the knowledge that we gain in colleges and school, like we study different subjects, subjects, how much does it come in use? No, it's of no use because they want someone experienced who can come up with innovative ideas. Uh, so they want an experienced person, the one who has talent in different sectors, but the bookish knowledge that we get is not enough for us. Okay, so the finance minister, uh, 
In the budget allocation for education in rural sector in the area, uh, in the year 2015 to 16 was 68 um, 68,968 crores, whereas this year 2016-17 it has been allocated 8,765 crores. Budget allocation in rural areas right now means this year was 100 crores for higher education. Narendra Modi ji had taken an initiative in Startup India that he will establish. 10 lakhs, uh, he will give education to more than 10 lakh children, establishing more than uh, 10, uh, 5 lakh schools. So, this was he allotted 1000 crore for higher education. 62 Navodaya Vidhalas will be opened for and uh, service shiksha abhiyan basically service shiksha abhiyan we, we are not much more aware about this abhiyan which was taken in the year 2001 by our prime minister atal bihari vajpayee this system was basically to improve the sanitation system in the country cleanliness but until and unless people are not educated how will the country be developed and uh, in order to develop uh, rural areas has to be focused one crore children will be made skilled through education. Skill of an individual will be developed. The entire talent of an individual will be developed within three years and digital education will be provi provided as the facilities that urban school students get, they will also be get benefited by these facilities. Often we see that our certificates get stolen uh, sometimes and we have to face several problems because of it. So this time he allocated some money for the digital storage of certificates as well. 1500 multi schools multi skill training will also be open like different talent that women possesses uh, entire talent like stitching clothing etc and male like carpentry plumbing etc so ambition behind focusing on rural education is youth of a country would come up with new innovative ideas entrepreneurship would be developed so that they were not scared of what entrepreneur is, they have to bear profit and loss, they have to uh, get aware with what profit and loss is in, uh, because we see generally people are scared um, that we will get loss. Okay. So, but my question is, will the targets be achieved and will the funds that have been allocated be utilized properly because generally we see that ideas are easy to formulate but it is that difficult to implement it in the previous year as we if we go to if we refer to the survey means uh, one third of the money was also not utilized properly as so this my question is will the funds be utilized properly this time and the targets will be achieved thank you Karishma. I would like to show one video clip if you all permit me thank you Karishma. you do time constant we are not able to allow it okay thank you Could you play it from the beginning, please? Basically, this video was representing that the ideas are formulated but if they are not implemented so I think that until and unless this budget that has been allocated is not utilized properly it's of no use lastly I would like to thank Namaskar I Lakshita Goel student of IS University to share my views on impact of budget on common man uh, firstly I would like to uh, uh, share my views about to, uh, top 10 expectation for budget Few hours raise IT exemptions limit to 5 lakh. In, uh, VIP must travel in India made car. Encourage use of drones in agriculture. As you all know, Finance Minister Arun, Jait uh, Arun Jaitley presented the union budget. It was third fiscal policy rolled out by Narendra Modi ji government. Uh, I would like to quote Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi words This budget is pro village. Pro poor, pro farmer. The main focus is to bringing about qualitative change in the country. Adding, there will be a big change in the lives of common people. 
Although the budget paid heed to the most of the sectors, there was a special focus on presenting it as a pro-poor and pro-farmer fiscal policy. <coughs> now, I would like to ask, how does the union budget affect our life? Positive or negative ways? Positives for common man. Incentive for small taxpayer, tax rebate under section 87A, raised from Indian rupees 2,000 to 5,000. For example, if a person whose income is 5 lakh, uh, 2.5 is basic redemption limit. 2.5 lakh, 10% uh, will be 25,000. In 25,000, 2, uh, 2,000 uh, is relieved, which was in last year. Now this has been increased to 5,000. So, uh, concluding it, it would be 25 or uh, 20,000 tax uh, will be uh, will be taxed to the common man. Second, a limit for deduction of rent paid under section 80GG raised from 60,000 uh, raised uh, to 60,000. There was a drastic change of 26,000. Last year it was 24,000 which has been 60,000 this year. Turnover limit for presentive, uh, presentive taxation scheme under section 44DD upside from Indian 1 crore to 2 crore. There was a clause added to this that if the person is investing in this, he cannot withdraw till 5 years. For startups, 100% deduction, penalty the, uh, rate were revised to 50%, 20% for misreporting of facts. New health insurance scheme, new PM uh, Fasal uh, Bima Yojana. The best part is they have no change in any tax lab. Well, coming up to my views for negative for common man are if common man is an investor and getting a dividend of more than rupees 10, uh, 10 lakhs per annum, then he is supposed to pay flat, flat tax 10% on dividend income. This is normally which a rich class people gets. Higher surcharge of 15% which was earlier 12%. Increase in service tax 12.6% uh, uh, to 15%. In this, uh, 0.5 Swatch Bharat Abhiyan test was added and 0.5 Krishi, Krishi Kalyan was added by Narendra Modi ji, Honorable Prime Minister. Tax on EPF withdrawal on retirement. Assurance for withdrawal. This was done in this uh, budget session. Then, uh, excise duty increased. Levi on infrastructure says 1% on small petrol, LPG, CNG. Well, uh, whatever I've explained in positive and negative, whichever can be seen here in the pictures, you need to pay more for. There are very, uh, very special gold, legal services, branded clothes. We need to pay more for this thing. As, the, uh, as in panel discussion, we had that if shopping is or shopping uh, for girls would be less, will it be impactful or not? Obviously no. <laughs> we like to shop and we would be shopping branded clothes. I know it would be higher cost but still we would be shopping for the same. Car 1% uh, will be deducted. Uh, will 1% uh, will be uh, deducted or increased. Uh, lastly, I would just like to quote. Well, coming to the end, the impact of budget will be seen by the end of this year, in my views, there should be a positive impact and for poor middle class budget less to cheer about. Thank you. My name is Kratika Sharma and I am the student of Japan National University. Uh, I am here to present the uh, budget summary. First, let me clear the meaning of budget. It's a financial statement showing the estimated receipts and ex uh, expenditure of government of that particular year. <laughs> This budget mainly focuses on farm, rural sector, social sector, infrastructure sector, employment generation and recapitalization of banks. The budget covers many segments. First is taxations. People were expecting change in the first slab of the income tax, but there was no change. Excise duty was uh, excise duty was uh, raised from 10 to 15 percent on tobacco products, other than bills. <coughs> 0.5% Krishi Kalyan says to be levied on all the time, all the services. 1% service charge on the purchase of SUV, luxury cars and on jewelry, excluding silver. Next segment, next segment is agriculture and farmer sector. 
Allocation for the agriculture and farmer welfare is 35,984 crores. A dedicated long-term irrigation fund will be created in Nab created in Nabat with an initial corpus of about 20,000 crores. Five lakh pounds, five lakh farm pounds, and dug wells in the rain-filled areas. Allocation under the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sarak Yojana increased to 19,000 crores. Allocation under Prime Minister Fasal Bhima Yojana is 5,500 crore. 100% village electrification by 1st May 2018. <coughs> a new digital literacy mission scheme for the rural India to cover around 6 crore additional households within the next 3 years. New scheme Rashtri Gram Swaraj Abhiyan proposed with the allocation of 655 crores. Now the social sector including healthcare. Allocation for the social sector including education with healthcare is 1,51,581 like like <coughs> crore. 2,000 crores allocated with the initial cost of providing LPG connections to BPL families. New health, protect, new health protection scheme will provide health cover up to 1 lakh per family. Education and skill job creation. 62 Namodia Vidyalas will be open. Service Siksha Abhyan to increasing focus on quality of education. Regulatory architecture will to be provided on 10 public and 10 private sectors. Institution to be emerged a world class teaching and a research institution <coughs> by education <coughs> financing agency to be set up with an initial capital based 1000 crores. Digital Depository. Digital Depository for School Leaving Certificates, College Degrees, Academic Awards and Mark Sheets for, to be set up. Government of India will contribute of 8.3% for all new employees enrolling in EM Employment Provident Fund for the first three years. Financial Sector Funds, Target of Amount section, Sanction under uh, Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana increased to 180,000 crores. Price stabilization with a corpus of 900 crores to maintain the prices of pulses. Relief to small taxpayers. Raise the ceiling of tax rebate under the section 87A from 2000 to 5000 to lessen the tax burden on individuals with income up to 5 lakhs. Increase the limits of deduction on the rent paid under section 80GG from 24,000 per annum to 60,000 to provide relief to those who live in rented houses. Challenges in 2016 and 17. Risk up for further global slowdown and turbulence. Additional fiscal burden due to seven pay commission recommended and OROP. Conclusion Main focus on rural development, promoting entrepreneurship among SEs and ST. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have the. members, juries, order the juries, and my dear friends, sir. I, Tushar Nikam, represent Jim Shapur. Now we are going to represent a topic on Union Budget 2016, a bone or bane of rural India. As you all know, our Prime Minister, our Prime Minister Narin Modi, has launched the Union Budget 2016-17, a bone or bane for rural India. They are focusing on the rural economy of Budget 2016. Welfare budget of total 359.84 billion rupees. They have been focusing on agriculture and farmer welfare. Farmers' income to double by 2022. 28.5 lakh hectare will be brought under Vidhan Mantri Chai Yojana. Will be created now with an initial corpus of rupees 20,000 crore. And continues uh, rupees 27,000 crore, including state share, to be spent on PMCG in 2016 and 17. A village will be activated by 1 1st May of 2018. A new digital literacy mission scheme will be launched to rural India, covered around 6 crore. <coughs> the India budget 2016-17 focuses squarely on rural sector. The financial minister announced. New Rural Aid and Healthy Performance. The Financial Minister voted 100% village electrification to be achieved by May 2018. He targeting a total of Rs. 130 million dollar increment for to farmers. 
The rural's program allocated 358 million rupees, that is 5.61 billion dollar in 2016-17. Rural road will be developed to get 190 billion rupees. Yes, thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, jury. Good afternoon, students. I'm Arshad Atre from BCom Honors, second year, Ahmed University. So here I am presenting my views on my topic, Union Budget. So this is the index in which I am going to follow. Introduction. The main focus of this budget is to reach 7.6 in 2015 and 16. Foreign and exchange has been improved. The main focus of this is to provide employment to as much as they can do, providing opportunities to new businesses, new enterprises and focus on new new development era. Motivate people for real estate, like purchasing houses and buildings. These are the main sector on which I am focused. Agriculture, rural sector, social sector, education, infrastructure and financial sector reforms. There are also fiscal and other departments also. So, in agriculture sector, the total investment is done 35,000 a 984 crores, from which 89 irrigation irrigation projects have been undertaken by AIBP, which is accelerating accelerating irrigation program benefit program, which main purpose is to main purpose is to benefit the irrigation programs in rural in rural sectors. Five lakh farm farm ponds, which will be very useful irrigation purposes and 10 lakh composite pits for manure. Promote organic farms through these two organizations which are working in non-east regions. Next is rural sector. Allocation for rural sector is 87,765 crores which you have already noted in our budget. From which 100% village will be electrified from till 1st May 2018, which is a very big step for development. Now digital scheme ruler, we, the main purpose of this, this scheme is to uh, literate people about housing schemes and house, households. Then we have social sector and healthcare. A location for social sector is 1,51,581 crores, which is a lot. 2,000 crores allotted for initial cost of providing LPG connections to BLP, BPL families, below poverty line families, which is also a great step because if you are giving your subsidy and it is going to someone needed, it, it's a very big thing to do. New health project, protection schemes. Health has also been considered this time. Every, every step has been taken to provide better health organizations. Then we have education and skills. We know that in India we have many colleges, many institutes, but what knowledge we have, what skills we have, for that it is has been provided. After this, we have infrastructure and investments. The tax we are paying is finally going to be used. You can see the amounts. Finally, then we can see good roads in every year. After that, financial sector. RBI is taking many steps. Insurance company can put their stocks in share market. A huge investment can be done in this because investment insurance insurance agency are the biggest earning right now. After that, I can conclude that the, these policies have been taken into consideration for global slowdown. Like two, three months back, we were fair, afraid of China breakdown. For that, these policies have been considered that these policy can stop that and we can grow in proper way without getting affected by global global slowdowns. Thank you for your patience. India does not live in its town, but in its villages. Namaskar, I Radhika Sharma of the IS University is here to throw some light on an important highlights of the Union Budget 2016 in rural sector. 
as still 70% of the poor people of the people are residing in the villages so the rural rural sector has an essential impact on the overall development of the country we all are grateful to our farmers to being a backbone of our country's food security we need to think beyond the food security and give back to our farmers a sense of income security so our government has given the total allocation for agriculture and farmer welfare is 35984 crore now let's talk about an irrigation irrigation is a critical input for increasing agriculture uh, production and productivity so implementation of 89 irrigation project under aibp which will help to irrigate 80.6 lakh hectare land other than this the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana which aims to hal khet ko pani and more crop per drop is being implemented in mission mode 28.5 lakh hectare land will be brought under an irrigation in that focus manner with end to end solution on source creation management and an extension activity in 2012 to 2014 the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana has suffered with the problem of underfunding but now it has been substantially increased the allocation in last two year and also the government has approved the path breaking path breaking crop insurance scheme mainly the prime minister fasal bima yojana after agriculture let's move on to some segment of rural sector for rural upliftment and the development government allocated 87765 crore women of india have faced the curse of smoke during the process of cooking according to expert the open fire in kitchen is like burning 400 cigarettes and hour this year the government has decided to set aside a sum of 2000 crore to meet an initial cost of lpg connection other than this the government is committed to achieve 100% village electrification which aims har ghar ko bijli and swachh bharat abhiyan mission in india biggest drive to improve the sanitation and cleanliness especially in the rural india so so the government has been provided 9000 crore for cleanliness under the swachh bharat abhiyan to make india swachh when there is so much clever in our agriculture sector the because of the low profitability and the reducing public investment this budget is a brighter spot all as far as the agriculture and rural sectors are concerned so i conclude by saying that annual budget should be appreciated because of the special focus on rural and agriculture sector thank you and have a nice day i am kamish from amity university from bcom honors second year uh, and my uh, budget is these are the points that i will be covering agriculture we everyone have discussed uh, due to the time limit i i would like that i will go further on rural sector uh, the budget is said to be more pro rural pro uh, not the suit booted sarkar went to the rural so the one of the thing is that the rural clusters 300 villages will be taken more than smart city we need smart villages uh, the second is the digital literacy mission 70% of the population gains uh 70% of the population is from the rural so more emphasis every nation's pride is women's and rural uh women and the uh, second i will go on will be the financial reforms many things have been discussed earlier by sir uh and the panel so one of the things uh, i would actually discuss would be the coming of fdi in r that is asset reconstruction company that was 49% earlier but now it is 100% that's a great step actually recapitalization uh, it has been allotted 25000 crore though we need 2 lakh 50000 crores but 25000 crore is been given anyway that's a good idea uh, mudra yojana that is one of the best ideas that has given that is uh, uh, like giving entrepreneurs a boost to entrepreneur actually now the employment and growth how would uh, we boost uh, this has been earlier discussed the impacts have been well uh, said by uh, the panel so moving further would be the step in uh, startup india stand up india now uh, let me tell you some of the uh, good 2015 was one of the best prosperous year for startups we have been listening startup startup all over as of 2015 i must say you india boasts herself 
for producing uh, 19,400 startups that are technology based. So non-technology based that would be much more. Now uh, as far as uh, raising uh, the funds that was 3.5 billion in 2015 and by 2000 uh, this the coming fiscal year that would be around 17 dollars billion that with a rate of 21.4 percent I must say you are uh, two papers I have written on uh, women entrepreneurship and I must tell you with the research I would women's lead this business sorry leads this business and uh, Zivame your story and there are many startups that are led by women actually you guys should be proud of that now now the one is that uh, Startup India is a mother for all the incubation and ideas you got because it provides necessary funding and everything and 100% deduction is now this 100% deduction I won't agree this looks good on paper but on a practical life it is not uh, that because when you take of the, this uh, Flipkart, Snapdeal, Shopclues, this kind of business startups they actually uh, what is uh, means they don't earn profit in the three years actually so coming with that taxation more than then taxation relief there should be infrastructure access to infrastructure to the startup should be given now uh, uh, the social sector and automobile sector these two sectors I have taken because if we talk about make in India and automobile industry had grown its production so Uspe tax lagana, that is one thing that won't go, but as far as pollution is controlled. So, ye green energy ke liye baut sahi hai. Now, what I, uh, conclusion, what I want to do, uh, what I came up to is, this is a very good structured, uh, though, they, though this has a negative points, but the only thing we need is implementation, implementation and implementation with the view of, let us explore the unexplored India and gain a good growth. Thank you everybody. My name is Riddhi Tiwari and I'm a financial studies honor student, second semester. What topic I have chosen is consumers union budget. I have divided my presentation into three parts that is uh, expect expectations, impact and also the highlights. So beginning with the expectations I would say the, it was uh, expected that there will be increase in rural spending excise duty will increase about 10% for cigarettes and pay commission payout but what the budget has actually to offer so we can see that the cigarettes have been increased the tax on cigarettes have been increased from 10 to 15% excluding BDs well we, when we talk of the jewelry I would say jewelry industry uh, one one person excise duty is levied without SENVAT credit and 12.5% with SENVAT credit. Jewelry industry is also very unhappy because of making PAN card mandatory for any purchases above 1 lakh rupees and is going to have a serious impact on the consumption. As not more than 13% of Indians have PAN card and only 4% of them pay income tax. When we come, uh, well, Buyers will now have to pay 1% extra in form of PDS on cash purchases exceeding 2 lakh. When we talk of garment, ready-made garments, uh, uh, on purchase of more than 1000 rupees, extra tax will be charged. Higher excise duty has to be paid on ready-made garments price at more than 1000 rupees. Uh, well, Krishi Kalyan says has already been discussed, but Airfares will go up from 8% to 14% and well now talking of the footwear industry the raw material has uh, been the excise duty on raw material has been reduced from 12.5% to 6% whereas the finished when we talk of finished goods it has gone up from 25 to 30% and talking of the foreign direct investment 100% is to be allowed in marketing food. Now, let's see the impact. What impact has it on companies, the corporate sector? Companies like ITC, Arvind, and Pantaloon Fashion and retail impacted by higher excise duty, whereas the footwear industries like Bata has gained. 
Now, the impacting sector. Food processing sector has attracted investments as big as 100% foreign direct investment. Jewelry industry is, is unhappy with increase in excise duty. And if we talk of the footwear industry, it's to gain from lower raw materials. And stimulation to consumption growth due to uh, increase in rural spending. Now, the basic question that every consumer faces, that what goods will become cheaper and what is going to be dearer. So, here's a look, have a look at this. What has become costlier? Coming to the conclusion, I found various steps in this budget that would help boost consumption. I believe it is a positive change for the society, but let's give some time for the society to adopt it. And in all, overall, I see it's a mixed bag, which is majorly positive for consumers. Thank you so much. I am here to give my presentation on topic Union Budget, What's in There for Startups. Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi introduced Startup Stand Up India Initiative on the eve of Independence Day last year. And on January 16, he unveiled the 19 point action plan for it. This action plan actually set very high expectations for us for the startup program. But the budget 2016 seems to have fallen short of all the high expectations. So here is a look at the major announcements from the budget. The first announcement was related to the tax, uh, tax holiday for, for the three years out of the five years, except MAP. That means MAP is applicable during April 16 to March 2019. No doubt, we all were expecting for service tax exemption too, but there was no such proposal related to service tax and the budget. Moreover, startups do not earn much in the initial years, say for three years or five years, so benefit is not likely to be very effective. Second announcement is related to the MOOCs. What is MOOCs? MOOCs is Massive Open Online Course. This is basically for the entrepreneurs. They will be, teach, uh, they will be taught to MOOCs channel. Spider J CEO said that through it is expected to raise US dollar 700 million and will generate around 5,000 jobs in the next 12 months. Next announcement is related to the capital gain. LTCG tax has been a huge bone of contention for the startup community. Listed companies do not attract LTCG beyond the holding of the 12 months, but unlisted companies attract 20% till the holding period of three years. Now, this holding period has been reduced from three years to the two years. Next big announcement is one day in corporation. Imagine all the certificate, all the DINs, digital signatures, approvals can be done in one day. This is possible with the mobile app and uh, this mobile app will be launched soon. Uh, related amendments in the Companies Act 2013 will be done soon. The next announcement is for the SCSC Women Entrepreneurs. To promote the SCSC and Women Entrepreneurs, rupees 500 crore has been allocated for the sale. Government will partner with DICCI to set up the entrepreneur hubs. Next, next is for the special patent resign. Special patent resign has been proposed with a 10% rate of tax on income from the worldwide exploitation of patents developed and registered in India. This is itself a big boost for startups as it will promote the more IPRs uh, as more IPRs will be developed and introduced in India. Remember, uh, the next, uh, the next is um, budget in my opinion. Since startups do not make profits in the first few years, the tax holiday are not very useful. Moreover, uh, uh, one day uh, incorporation is great, but however, closure of a company within a reasonable time is also equally important. Remember the 19th point of the action plan of Mr. Narendra Modi. He said that this uh, 19th point is for exit of the uh, startups. If startups fail, they will be uh, they will be given an easy exit plan. So there was no such plan in the budget this year, this time. And there could also be a real time phase exemption from the labor law compliances, as uh, labor law compliances is again a big hurdle for the startup industry uh, at last. Uh, it could be said that a lot was expected, but the least was fulfilled. Three things 
that stops from making this budget a startup blockbuster budget, uh, the less tax provisions, the continued labor laws, and no exit plans for the startup industry. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Shruti Agarwal in front of you. I'm going to present my topic on railway budget that is not yet discussed. So, uh, budget is an estimate of income and expenditure for a period of time. It is the second weekly budget that is announced by the Suresh Prabhu. Uh, Indian budget is the largest growing industry among the world. The Indian, it is the la fourth largest network in the world, uh, which is co which covers 65,000 kilometers and the largest transportation, which covers 19,000 trains. Moving towards the uh, highlights in 2015-16, the savings are 8720 crores, and in 16-17, the targeted operator, uh, operating ratio, that is operating expenses as a percentage of revenue, is 92 percent. Coming towards customer interface, uh, making travel comforting by generating 65,000 additional births, 2,500 water vending machines. Introduction of, uh, of bio, bio toilets that are being introduced first time in the world uh, in, in India and improving punctuality in the trains. And the introduction of automatic ticket uh, vending machines and automatic uh, on ticket vending machines, online registration, uh, online booking of tickets, and online booking of wheelchairs for the visible persons. There is an open Wi Fi facility, which, is, which I think is the biggest benefit for all of us. And focus on security through CCTV cameras and other <coughs> helpline. Introduction of FM. Uh, topic here: India budget 2016-17. You are discussing railway budget. Yes, sir. It was not announced. No, sir. I discussed the topic with the ma'am that I want to present on railway budget. It's very allowed, by It is allowed. Okay, allowed only. Okay, so the introduction of FM radio that is for, for entertainment purpose, improving quality of travel that is uh, for reserved and unreserved uh, passengers like this. Unreserved are for those you, did, you, you where you don't need to prior uh, booking of your tickets. You can purchase a ticket on the spot uh, that is on, on, on the Odia Express with a super fast service and these they are coaches for the portable water and high number of uh, charging uh, points. Uh, with the reserve passenger, the introduction of train teachers with the uh, with the services of entertainment, local cuisine and Wi-Fi etc. We are focused on the cleanliness that is uh, where we are lacking behind, behind that is clean my coach service through uh, SMS. Then uh, we have stalls and st catering and stalls that is mandatory on the train. Uh, then we have travel, uh, the new uh, scheme has been introduced that is travel insurance to passengers. That is it is uh, optional at the time of uh, booking, it is not uh, compulsory for everyone. Now, the, if you look uh, look about the uh, in the view inside the train, that is the implementation of smart. That is, coaches are well designed and facilitated facilities of automatic door, barcodes, uh, readers, accessible dustbins, etc. has been introduced. Uh, rail uh, metro rail metro seva that is to help old and disabled persons. Uh, the colleagues will be termed as sahayaks and provide training with the new uniforms. Now, uh, overnight double tapper trains to be introduced in the busiest route. Uh, there is a special special focus on the women and uh, for the senior citizen, as 33% of the quota was reserved for the women with a hot milk and hot water and baby food. And for senior citizen, uh, we have 50% of quota reserved. Okay, India first rail auto hub to be set up in Chennai. The rail auto hub means that the transportation of the vehicles from one one place to another through rail. The capacity is five thousand cars at a time. The expectations last. Uh, they. Uh, the Indian railway budget was more beyond that our expectations, which the, neighbor, which the common man has never expected from the railway budget. But the, this budget is quite challenging and it's very uh, promising for the Indian railway as the freight charges uh, remain un unchanged. So it would be very challenging and interesting to see the changes in the railway budget. Thank you. Uh, I would like to share a quote by our finance minister. Kashti Chalane Walo ne. जब हार के दी पटवार हमें लहर लहर तूफान मिले और मौज मौज मजधार हमें फिर भी दिखाया है हमने 
और फिर ये दिखा देंगे सबको कि इन हालात में में आता है दरिया करना पार हम वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट हियर माय नेम इज सोनाली काबरा एंड द टॉपिक फॉर द प्रेजेंटेशन इज इम्पैक्ट ऑफ यूनियन बजट ऑन फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर The objectives behind the introducing reforms in this sector it was basically to promote transparency stability uh, to promote financial inclusion reduce the npas and to increase the foreign direct investment these are the a few uh, of the reforms which have been introduced uh, i will be discussing a few of them uh the government uh, it has made allocation of 25000 crore to the psus uh, who since the npas of the public sector banks have been increasing due to their uh, bad credit policy also the impact of this decision is that it is very much lower than the expected uh, amount uh, and the further what further the banks will need to do is that they will have to approach to the market in order to raise their capital The next reform is Banking Board Bureau, uh, which will be uh, in operation soon. Uh, this reform it was basically undertaken in in order to reduce the governance of the government at the top and the board level. Uh, it will basically bring in more efficiency in operations and uh, faster decision making. Now, sponsor of ARC to hold a hundred percent stake. Uh, ARC basically are asset reconstruction company registered under Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Informal Enforcement of Security Interest Act 2002. ARC's primary goal is to manage and make profitable those assets which have been underperforming. Uh, basically, uh, this decision was undertaken to allow 100% FGI in order to solve the capital problems of ARCs and reduce their bad loans. The another uh, decision uh, and reform which had been taken was uh, to list the general insurance companies and the stock exchange. Uh, this would basically make it more accountable and provide transparency to uh, to the working. In order to provide better access to financial services, two major reforms were introduced. That is to increase the target under uh, micro unit uh, development and refinance agency to uh, rupees one lakh eighty thousand crore. Moreover, so there has been a decision to increase the number of ATMs and micro ATMs in the post offices uh, in the next three years. Now, uh, the fiscal deficit which has been uh, presented in the budget is 3.5 percent of the GDP, uh, which means that the government it will borrow less from the market, and so the money in the banking sector it could provide for for the bank uh, for the uh, business expansion. The impact of this the, uh, decision it has it has two impacts basically first is to attract the foreign institutional investors and the next is to uh, cut uh, the RBI they it might uh, cut it, uh, the key rates. Uh, I have also under uh, taken the spec on stock market the day on which the budget was announced that is on 29th uh, Feb. Uh, the market it went down. The basic reasons were the introduction of general uh, anti avoidance rules. Secondly, was the investors uh, they which were receiving a dividend of more than uh, one million rupees, they will have now to pay the tax of ten percent. Uh, since uh, the stock market is all about market sentiments, uh, so the market took a turn and uh, it took a rise on the first and second of March. Uh, the basic reasons was uh, the uh, fiscal deficit of uh, 3.5% of GDP. It uh, was a positive impact uh, as it was a sign of government's adherence to fiscal discipline. Also, the rate cut by the RBI was another reason as it would stimulate demand and growth and thus the profit in the market. Uh, now, uh, I would like to conclude that we inherited an economy of low growth, high inflation. Penny saved is worth two pennies earned after tax. Well said. Namaskar to one and all present here. Today, I, Tanvi Sharma, will going to present my views and thoughts on Union Budget 2016 and 17. As we all are aware of the fact that Union Budget is presented each year on the last working day of February by the Finance Minister of India in the Parliament. Moving forward, I would like to proceed further by looking forward to the expectations from the Union Budget. Talking about the key expectations of public from the Union Budget, there was basically four key expectations of public from the Union Budget, majorly about GST. Secondly, Modi talking more about making India concept people were expecting a lot on startup initiatives. 
raising threshold limit for TDS, and the last one being increased minimum tax bracket from 2.5 to 3 lakh. These have been the expectations of general public from the budget. <coughs> so I'm going to present my views on the topic impact of budget 2016-17 on startup. That is very high tip topic these days and very pop popular in the presentation itself. So before proceeding further, I would like to I would like to tell you that what exactly startup means according to Narendra Modi or according to Arun Jaitley. A startup is a company which has equity funding of at least 20% from the incubator or private equity funding. Moreover, a SEBI endorsing any business as an innovative business is called to be a startup according to Arun Jaitley. And all the benefits that will be proceeding further can be availed only by them. So these were the basic four provisions that were there in this budget. First being 100 percent deduction on profit, shortening of holding period, registration of companies, and corporate income tax rate. Moving to the first provision for the startup, that being 100 percent deduction on profit, no tax will be a startup doesn't have to give any tax. What could be happier than this? For the initial of three months, for, sorry, for the initial of three years out of any five years. But the key highlight point in this would be that only innovative nature of business would be considered for this exemption. Proceeding further, holding period, shortening of holding period from 3 to 2 years, benefits of long term gain regime in case of unlisted company. The company will gain long term benefit regime since the holding period was being shortened up from 3 years to 2 years. The third being registration of companies. Registration of companies will take no longer than just a day, government one day's incorporation. This is one of the very famous uh, initiative being taken by the government. Since the company can be registered in just one day and you don't have to be very lethargic in registering the company and think a lot before starting any incorporation. The last provision being for the startup being corporate income tax. It has been discussed by esteemed panelists as well. I would let, just like to give you a glimpse about it. Any company whose turnover is more than 5 crore can pay a tax of rupees 29, at the rate of 29% and any company which has been incorporated after 1st March can pay a tax at the rate of 25% provided it leaves all the benefits. Other consideration that bring other consideration that are being taken is allocate 500 crore for startup scheme, the year of entrepreneurship for scheduled caste. The inference which I want to draw from my opinion for this is startup does not earn any profit in the initial phase. So it is very common that startup will not earn any profit in the initial three years. So the threshold limit has to be raised up according to me. Next, uh, next is startup in Startup India is a great initiative, but it depends on execution. Everything of it depends whether it will be executed or not. Third is the funds have been allocated, but my question being, will the funds go on the right place and the right hand? So I would just like to conclude my presentation by saying the biggest focus of this budget is on village, poor, women, and youth. Dalits and Adivasis now want to become entrepreneurs. He doesn't want to be a job seeker, but a job creator. Budget 2016-17 has, has hit the red bull eye, but everything depends on implementation. Thank you. Present here. My name is Sonu Kamar, and I am here to give presentation on the topic highlights of Union Budget 2016 for salaried class. Budget is an estimate of income and expenditure for a set period of time. Each and every individual has its own expectations from budget. So let us see some of expectations of salaried class from the budget 2016. Possible change in income tax slabs, cheap home loans, easy investment plans, tax exemption limit in the region of rupees 3 lakh per year. The leave travel allowance discount that is currently given twice in four years should, should be enhanced. House rent allowance will be increased. Improved national pension scheme. Transportation allowance to be increased. So here are some outcomes. No change in income tax slabs. First time home buyer rupees 50,000 deduction for up to rupees 35 lakh. Loan provided house cost not more than rupees 50 lakh. EPF that is employment provident fund was made taxable but in the latest announcement from the government it has been made tax free once again. So Arun Jaitley said people who do not have house of their own and don't get any house rent allowance 
from their employer get a reduction of rupees 24,000. National pension scheme withdrawal of 40% of corpse at the time of retirement tax exempt. Tax rebate for those earning less than rupees 5 lakh per annum. Budget provide rupees 70,000 crore for 7th pay implementation. Public provident fund will continue to be in the EEE tax regime, meaning that its principal interest earned and the maturity value would remain tax free. Here is the conclusion. Cheers for the salary class government rolls back budget EPF tax proposal. By keeping EPF and PPF tax free, government has allowed the salaried class to maintain their future savings. <coughs> Pay Commission will support the salaried people to sustain the growing inflation. Thank you.